Welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. This is the podcast where I encourage you to go out and take your dream, receive your destiny from the Lord Jesus, the destiny that He planned for you before the foundation of the world. This is the territory that God has ordained for your life. It's a big dream that you have, and it can happen. Every good thing is waiting for you, and today we're going to talk about making that visible in your life. Stay tuned for today's episode. Hello and welcome back to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. Today we are still continuing our series on praying through the acronym WISDOM, asking the Lord for guidance in every decision. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. We are going to continue our discussion on the acronym WISDOM, praying and asking the Lord for guidance in every decision. Now the acronym WISDOM to review stands for WHEN, IF, SENSITIVE, DO, ORDER, AND METHOD. And those combined stand for wisdom. Now, of course, we just need wisdom all the time, right? The Bible says to get wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. But specifically, I like to use these prayer acronyms because they remind me to cover all aspects and facets of a situation in prayer. And if you use an acronym like this and you memorize it, then whenever you're praying, you'll remember, oh, there's this important aspect of the situation that I would otherwise have forgotten but yet you remember to pray it because of the acronym. So I highly recommend learning some healthy, helpful prayer tools like acronyms just to enrich your prayer life and help you remember to pray for some of those deeper things that might not always cross your mind every single day. Well, today, talking about the I in wisdom, the I stands for if. And we are going to pray and just ask the Lord to show us if we should do a thing. Now, when we pray and ask the Lord for guidance in a decision, we typically will know kind of which way our gut instinct tells us to go. But sometimes, you know, we tend to overthink things. Sometimes we don't listen necessarily to our spirit, which we often call our heart. We don't always listen to that still small voice of the Lord. Sometimes we get it all up in our head and we start trying to figure out the logic on every decision. Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and he gives us a brain. And of course, he expects us to use that brain and he expects us to operate in wisdom. But we have to remember that the natural man cannot receive the things of God. They are spiritually discerned. And so when you are paying attention to the Lord, asking him to guide you in a decision, you have to remember to engage with your spirit. It is because your spirit must pay attention to Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit who is in you. He is going to communicate with you on a spirit level. The things that God asks you to do do not always make sense. They do not always add up mathematically. I mean, if you think about even the feeding of the 5,000, you know, John chapter 6, you have five loaves and two fish, and the little boy gave his little lunch to Jesus, and that's great, but the disciples were probably like, um, what's going to happen here? How are we going to feed all these people? And remember, the 5,000 was just men. That wasn't even counting the women and children that would have also been in that crowd as well. So how on earth was the math going to work for that? Jesus, he took those five loaves and those two small fish, and he gave thanks to the Lord for them. He blessed them, and then he handed the pieces to the disciples. And what happened? They just kept on coming. And it turns out that at the end, what started out as five loaves and two fish, and the Bible says after they had eaten everything they wanted, Then the disciples had to pick up the crumbs because Jesus wasn't going to leave a mess out there on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. So the disciples picked up the crumbs and there were 12 baskets just of crumbs, crumbs and fish bones and little pieces of meat and little bread heels and so on and so forth. All the pieces, there were 12 baskets. So just the crumbs were more than the lunch ever was at the beginning. None of that makes logical sense. But you know what? That is the realm in which God operates. God operates on miracle territory. He does not usually ask us, hey, I'm considering doing X, Y, or Z. Does this work with your logical plan? I just wanted to check before I do this great and mighty thing. I mean, if it were logical, it wouldn't be great and mighty. But God says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. That's Jeremiah 33.3. Well, that part about that you do not know automatically means it ain't logical. It's not something your natural brain came up with. It's not something you would ever reason out for yourself. And yet, God wants us to make these decisions. When we're praying, 
We have to be sure that we are willing to tune in to the checks and balances and tests of decision making that are in the word in order to know if we should do one thing or not. So when we ask him, Father God, please show me if I should do this thing at all, or if I should wait, or if I should not do it. Help me be patient if I should wait, but help me to do the thing if you want me to. That's a whole lot of submitting to the Lord right there, because if you pray that, Remember, the big word today is if. That's our big key. The I in wisdom stands for if. If God wants us to do something, then we will, number one, have peace about it. Now, that doesn't mean you won't have any trepidation about it, because you might still feel what some people would call fear, but I would rather call trepidation, because you're stepping out into totally unknown territory, potentially. But you'll have a peace about it, And you will have a sweet sensing of the presence of the Lord with you. Whereas if you disobey God, you will grieve the Holy Spirit. And if he has told you to do something and you don't do it, suddenly you'll feel like God is very far away. Why? Because you disobeyed him. You grieved him. He's still there, but he is maybe not as close. I mean, he's still inside you, but there's not that sweet communion because you grieved him and you hurt him by your disobedience. I hope that makes sense. So when you are praying if, in other words, praying God show me if I should do this thing, be sure that you are willing to actually do the thing if the Lord leads you to and recognize that that leading is going to be a spirit to spirit leading, not a logic to logic leading. God is not going to get out his calculator, his ruler, and draw you a 15 point flow chart on how you are supposed to act and what he is going to do to provide for you in all the different ways in order to get you to obey. Hey friend, do you have the Bible app version installed on your phone, your iPad, or other device? If so, did you know that we have material on version for you and it's free? We have Bible plans, including seven prayers for your nation, a five-day harvest fast prayer plan, a Bible plan called, Are Your Dreams Big Enough? Another one, Seven Keys to Constant Miracles. Five Keys to a Glorious Prayer Life. Five Days to Victorious Fasting. 21 Days of Breakthrough Prayer. And 15 Days of Supernatural Encounters. That is a lot of good stuff. It's all free for you in daily devotional format on version. Just search by any of those titles and some of them will also show up if you search by my name or the name of our ministry from His Presence. And if you also need a quick, easy link, you can find those links on the homepage of our website at fromhispresence.com. Grab those daily devotionals. They're going to be a big blessing to you in the convenient format of version. The Bible says that we have to operate in faith and that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when we are praying, God, show me if I should do this thing. Show me whether or not I should do it at all then friend, tune in to God's Holy Spirit. Be aware that you might feel some trepidation. You're definitely going to have to step out into uncharted territory, but you can do the thing. God will work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. That means he'll give you the desire to do it and he'll help you actually accomplish it when you are willing to obey. So that's a big key to praying. If always ask the Lord, of course, to lead you and guide you. Remember Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye upon you. And if you'll remember that, depend on the Lord for that guidance, but be willing to put that foot into the unknown water and he will always be with you. He's big enough to help you. No matter what you do, if you mess it up, he'll still help you. But if you step out on that unknown territory like he asked you to, his help is going to be obvious and apparent. And it's going to work out even if you don't know how. I hope this helps. Remember the acronym WISDOM stands for when, if, sensitive, do, order, and method. We've already talked about when and if, and we're going to talk about sensitivity in the next episode. So I hope you tune in again, and we will see you soon. Thanks so much for listening today, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.